Hi, it's Tim Hagen from Progress Coaching, and welcome to another episode of Coaching Conversations. And I wanted to make you aware of something very cool that we're doing on a subscription basis, and we'll put a link in each one of our episodes. But every Wednesday, we're going to be doing what we call an audio podcast workshop. That workshop will be roughly about 14 to maybe 20 minutes per episode with each month having the theme from a coaching model, using feedback strategically to coaching self-awareness and so on. So if you could look in the body or in the content description of each episode, and you will see a link where you can join this subscription. These are literally four workshops every month teaching specific strategies to address a particular area of workplace coaching uh, as it relates, again, to things like awareness, motivation, teamwork, and what have you. Here's the cool thing. It's only $10 per month, and each month you will get a handout that we will follow along with, so we also give you a tool for you to take notes as we go through each episode. We hope you'll check it out. When all of us think about the crisis and everything that we're going through really during this very difficult time, I go back to something fundamental that we teach. Anytime you face a crisis, I think about the choice that each one of us make. And really, it goes to a runner's analogy. We can walk out of this crisis, we can jog out of this crisis, or we can sprint out of this crisis. Now, what exactly does that mean? I would say probably one of the best conversations I had was a couple weeks ago with an employee of one of our client sites. And the manager had asked me to talk to this employee, and I know the employee fairly well. And she kept telling me how much she was scared and how much she really feared what was going on. Her husband had been furloughed, and I asked the almighty question. I said, how are you financially? She said, things are very tight. I said, are you okay? She said, yes, we're okay. And I said, okay. I said, you know, it's interesting. I said, it's kind of a moral victory, but you're ahead of a lot of people. And I could see her facial expression change as we were doing a Zoom meeting. And I said, so I want you to think about this time. And I want you to think about not what's going on around you, but what is one thing you could do to make tomorrow just better? I know that's kind of corny, but what's one thing you could do? She said, honestly, I could pick up more shifts. I said, why aren't you? I don't know. And it hit me. And I am not making fun of this employee. One of my favorite employees, by the way. She's paralyzed. She's mentally paralyzed. She's waiting. It's such a unique thing. And not because she's got malice or poor intent. What she's really struggling with is, I don't know what to do. So what do we do when we don't know what to do? We do nothing. Doing nothing, whether conscious or subconscious, is a major, major decision. So I said to her, what action could you take tomorrow to move you in a positive direction? She said, again, I could pick up more shifts. I said, awesome, let's do that. I want you to pick up a couple more shifts, and then I want you to call me the following week. So she calls me the following week, and I said, what happened? She said, I picked up four more shifts, and I could hear a little bit of energy in her voice. And I said, So what did that do for you and your family? She said, it gave us some extra money that we weren't planning on. I said, so it begs the question, why didn't you do that before we talked? She goes, honestly, Tim, I I don't know. And I said, okay, that's cool. And I said, so what are you going to do outside of picking up more shifts to move in a positive direction starting tomorrow? And she stalled again. She said, I don't know. I said, okay. And this is one of my favorite questions of all time is I said, if you did know, what would you come up with? And she started to answer. See, people go to their knee-jerk reaction of, I don't know, because it takes less effort. When you don't know, I don't have to do anything. Now, this is not a lazy person, but mentally, she was paralyzed. She didn't know what to do. And I said, what if you helped somebody else? And she sat there. And she looked just stunned. And I said, what's wrong? She said, I hadn't thought of that. And I said, I want to give you a thought. And I want you to react to it as honestly as you can. And I'm going to give you a thought, a perception, a perspective, maybe an observation from this conversation that might be fair or unfair. 
So a lot of times when I lead with coaching and I lead with a thought, I'll give them a laundry list of things so they don't take it personally, such as this is just a thought, it's nothing major, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so as we started to talk, I said, I sense you're hunkered down, you're in a bunker, shrapnel's all around you, bombs are going above your head, and I made a little bit of a smile and a chuckle, and I said, you're just waiting for the war to end. And she said, yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. I mean, she did not hesitate. I said, why? She goes, I've always been like this. I said, what do you mean like this? She said, when things get tough, she said, I get anxious and I just don't move. I said, okay. I said, so let's go back two weeks ago. You picked up four shifts. I said, the minute I asked you the question, what happened? You sounded more energetic. You sounded more upbeat. I said, why do you think that is? She said, honestly, I think because I took action and I picked up four more shifts. I said, yet when I asked you the question again, what are you going to do next outside of picking up shifts? You said, I don't know. You immediately went that direction. I said, so I want to challenge you on something. I want you to do something. And I think we're going to cause drooling. I think we're going to cause a stuttering problem. And she looked at me like I was a lunatic. I said, I want you to completely remove the words, I don't know. When you think about the words, I don't know, or you're about to say the words, I don't know, what I want you to do is I want you to simply think of a wet baby diaper. And she starts laughing. She goes, this is really weird. I go, I know, isn't this really weird? And we started to laugh. So another week goes by. I said, so how are things going? She said, I hate you. And I said, what does that mean? She said, I found myself saying, I don't know, even on the line. It's a manufacturing client. And she said, people would ask me things like, what are you going to do in this weekend? Or what are you going to do? And she said, I found myself saying, I don't know. I said, so what does that teach you? She said, that I get into that bunker. I said, yeah. I said, don't we all? She said, you do? I said, oh, of course. At the start of this crisis in March, I was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding. I'm in the, the back end of my career. I've already been through the Great Recession. Why am I going through this again? She said, how did you get out of it? I said, honestly, I made one comment to myself. And she said, what's that? I said, I was made for this crisis. She said, what do you mean? I said, the first thing I did is I, I said, I don't want to be that guy to cross the line and become this pandemic expert. And you've got to do business with me because people in our business will jump on bandwagons, whether they have the skill set or not. I said, I will not do that. So I ended up creating an eight week program called Coaching to Uncertain Times. I had over 472 companies signed up. We did not do a sales call. We did not do a sales pitch. We just did it to help. And what I found by coaching others and teaching others is I was coaching myself. I said, so have you found yourself being more helpful with other people? She said, yes. She said, I just talked to a new employee and her husband got furloughed and she looked devastated and it hit me. I'm wondering if that's what I looked like. And I said, I can save you the time y you did. She said, really? And I said, yeah, you looked terrified. I said, here's the funny thing. It's an old notion. Motion creates emotion. And I think the same thing happens with our mental state. When we just sit and wait and we mindlessly watch TV, we mindlessly do nothing. What we're really creating is a mindless mentality. She said, boy, that's a great analogy. Now, if you notice what I'm depicting, we're having a different conversation than we had four weeks earlier, or roughly three weeks earlier. What I was doing was getting her to see herself. And I said, just remember, when you come out of this crisis, one of three things will happen. You will either walk out, if that, you will either jog out, or you will either sprint out. I said, now, if you sprint out, and you're sprinting during the crisis, motion creates emotion, 
you will come out of it faster than other people. Now, the challenge you have is your husband's been furloughed. Now, the toughest thing is you never coach your spouse. And she started laughing. And I said, so what you have to do is find ways to energetically, positively distract. So with one of her extra shifts, she ended up taking the family out for dinner, which was not in their budget. And she said, you know, for a few hours, we just forgot. And he started to come back. He started to sound more energetic. He sounded like he was going to start looking more aggressively for a job. So here's the funny thing about people. When we're hit with a disaster, we're hit with something. What do we tend to do? We don't embrace it and say, bring it on. I'm going to overcome this. We tend to go into that bunker. We tend to go into that bunker and we watch things go above our head and we wait for things to end. It's not everybody, but I guarantee you, you have people who are hunkering in a bunker, who are thinking it'll be over soon. So the question we have to ask is, do we have people that are mentally paralyzed? And I know that's kind of a crass analogy, but they're just stalled. No poor intent. They're just stalled. They don't know what to do. And the way you help people come out of that state is through conversation. Good luck. Thank you for listening to another episode of Coaching Conversations by Tim Hagen and Progress Coaching. Now, our company is always coming out with new and innovative solutions to help leaders coach their employees. And recently, we just created a new service called coach to You, where leaders can pick and choose topics and assign 7 to 21-day programs for employees to learn and, more importantly, apply actions and then reflect and share what they're going to do going forward as a result of the learning. It's called coach to You. We're literally bringing coaching to your employees. If you're intrigued, we'll have a link in each one of our episodes where you can get more information. And again, thank you so much for listening to another episode.